In the last video, we talked about engineering notation, and I told you the reason we use it in electronics is because it lends itself well to using metric prefixes. Metric prefixes are an easy way to write the most commonly used powers of 10 used in electronics. In this video, we're going to cover working with metric prefixes. To start out, let's have a quick word about the metric system. It's awesome, amazing, better in every way. Okay, the metric system is better because it's based on using powers of 10 with its base units. For instance, the base unit for length in the metric system is a meter. Now say you are working with very large distances such as 10,000 meters. You could call this 10 kilometers because there's 1,000 meters in a kilometer. To compare, the US standard system uses a foot. Then the next step up would be the yard, and there are three feet in a yard. It's not as easy to work with over a large or small range of distances. So now let's talk about metric prefixes. You noticed our base metric unit earlier was the meter. When we started working with larger distances, we added a prefix to the base unit. This is a metric prefix, and I mentioned that there are 1,000 meters in a kilometer. In engineering notation, this is 1 times 10 to the power of 3. So which would you rather write, one kilometer or one times 10 to the power of three meters? It sounds even worse when I say it compared to writing it. To make it even better, we can shorten kilometer by abbreviating it to just KM. Easy. So is it starting to make sense why we would use engineering notation and metric prefixes in electronics? We use abbreviated letter symbols in electronics. One letter for quantity and one letter for the base unit. I'm not going to get into base units in this video, I figure I'll introduce them as we go along. However, I do want to point out the difference between the name or concept of something and the units we use to describe these concepts. We talked about length earlier. Length is a concept, it's a distance. Meters and feet are the units of measurement that we use to describe the concept of distance. In the same way, in electronics, we have the concepts of voltage, current, and resistance, and the units we use to describe measurable quantities of those concepts are the volt, ampere, and ohm. Here's a chart showing these, plus the symbols we use to express these units. Now, let's talk about metric prefixes. Here's a list of metric prefixes commonly used. Their values and symbols and their corresponding powers of 10. Notice how the powers of 10 follow multiples of three. What a coincidence that our engineering notation worked in multiples of three. Easy. Metric prefixes are always used with a unit of measure, which is why we call them prefixes. So say we're working with 0 0.005 volts. This quantity can be expressed in engineering notation as 5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Using a metric prefix according to our chart, we can write this quantity as 5 millivolts. You might be thinking at this point, why even use metric prefixes? Why not just write 0 0.005 volts and forget all that nonsense? Well, remember the whole reason we use scientific notation or engineering notation is to make it easier to work with very large and very small numbers. What if this was the voltage we were working with? Not as easy now, right? Let's try a few practice examples to get the hang of this. Convert this number to be written with a metric prefix and its unit symbol. You can convert this number to engineering notation first, and then look at the chart to find your metric prefix and unit symbol. but that's a bit more work than it needs to be, especially when we start getting into circuit calculations. I would suggest taking the time to memorize your prefixes and symbols. So when I convert 0 0.0005 amperes to a shorthand version, again, I just think in terms of moving the decimal place over by threes. If moving the decimal to the right, we have milli, micro, nano, pico, femto, atto. If moving the decimal to the left, we have kilo, mega, giga, tera, peta, exa. I'd like to point out that kilo uses a lowercase k. I'm not sure why. I'm sure there's a reason. Maybe it's a French thing. Maybe it's a Latin thing. Who knows? So let's do another conversion using decimal moving method I like. 
Let's convert 50 million ohms to a shorthand using a prefix and a unit symbol. Skipping over twice by sets of three, we come to 50 megohms. All right, here comes a practice card. I hope you're getting the hang of this. If not, there will be plenty more practice later when we get into circuit analysis. Also, I'm working on a website still that will have some practice quizzes if you feel like you need some more practice. It will have some resources as well, such as a downloadable cheat sheet of the prefixes and units. I'll update the description for this video when I get it up and going, so check it out. Also, leave any questions you might have below in the comments. I'd love to hear them. But let me ask you a specific question. Which way does the electron flow? Subscribe and find out in the next video. We'll be talking about electron flow versus conventional flow theory. And don't forget to smash the like button. This is Life Meet Lightning, here to bring a little lightning into your life.